Hello guys, I'm Superon. Welcome back to the G-Unit and welcome to episode 18 of my GBS Zero build. In the last episode, we got a bit stuck on the Ford Sierra light switch, um, but I've done a bit of research. I've got all the answers so we can get it all wired in together. So let's have a look. So last week, with the help of all the wiring diagrams, we got most things labelled up and we got it worked out how everything works. Where the power comes in, power goes out for the indicators, the main beam, the dip beam. But what we couldn't find out was in the light switch itself, where the power goes through it. I'd got my wiring diagram here, but the terminals written on the back of the switch were all different and nothing lined up. So I did a bit of research and I found out something that explains all this. There are actually a lot of different types of Sierra switches. There's not just one. All through the years, they changed them, but strangely enough, they kept the same plugs on. They just moved all the terminals around and made them do different things. So it turns out there's actually about nine configurations of different Sierra switches, whether you've got washers, whether you're a saloon and a state with rear wipers, whether you've got the hazards on the top, whether you've got the horn on the end or the middle. There's all sorts of different things and all the wiring for each one is different, which can cause havoc if you're trying to buy a secondhand switch you get it all in, plug it in, and it seems like nothing works, which looking on the internet, that's happened a lot with the kit car world where people have been fitting these Sierra stalks into their kit cars and not really knowing which one they've had, but going off diagrams for a different one and finding either nothing works or things are crossing over and you've got side lights coming on with indicators. But the part numbers do signify which one you actually have. And luckily on this one, I've got it starting 90 BG, which means this is from a 1990 car. So the wiring diagram I've got, I got from the Haynes manual for the Ford Sierra, which is up to 1983. So let me show you on the little journey that I found all this information out. So the best advice to work to in any situation is knowledge is power. And in the wiring world, you get your knowledge from wiring diagrams like these. These are like a little treasure map that tell you everything you need to know about the circuit, where the power starts, how it gets to its destination and where it ends. And this is the wiring diagram I was using last week to wire up the stalks, which I found out a few things didn't line up. And this was actually a photocopy from this Ford Sierra Haynes manual. So this is an early one from 1982 to 1983. So this is when the Ford Sierra first came out. So you went to the showroom, you bought your brand new Ford Sierra, came home, bought a Haynes manual to start tinkering it with yourself. And back in the 80s, people dived right in. We've got carburetor rebuilds, gearbox rebuilds, all electrical, adjusting everything throughout the car you did yourself. And these days, people go to helpers just to get their headlight bulb changed. So this was up to a 1983, so this was too early for my 1990 Sierra Stalks. The other book I've got is this is an auto data. This is much the same as the Sierra Haynes manual, but this was more for the workshop based information. But this one is a 1982 to 1986. So it's a little bit later, but not quite late enough for my stalks. So I went to the internet, which of course is a wealth of knowledge across all the kit car forums, because the Sierra stalks have been used for years and years. And probably now there's more Sierra stalks in kit cars than there actually is Sierras on the road. So this, these questions had been asked over and over. And what I actually found out is there's three main types of Sierra lighting setup. I got most of my information off the Robin Hood Owners Club, because obviously they use the Sierra column and they seem to have asked the most questions. And every single one, all through the last 20 years, seemed to have been answered by a guy called Longboarder. He had the answers to if people had an 83 column, an 87, a 90. He had all the wiring diagrams and the answers. So all these posts were 5, 10, 15 years old, but the guy's called Nigel, and so people are still using his posts to get the information they need. And what I found out, there's three main types of Sierra lighted circuit. So you've got the early one like this, which I was going through the wiring diagrams for, and basically the power comes from the battery, goes up to the light switch, across to the dip main switch to decide whether you want dip beam or main beam, and then straight to the front and powers the headlights. So the problem with that, that puts a lot of current through the stalks, but this is how a lot of early cars were. So in the mid eighties, Ford changed this setup and they added some relays which take the electrical strain 
off the switches themselves and puts the power through the relays. So it is the same wiring setup, the power came from the battery, through the light switch, through the dip switch, but then instead of powering the bulbs directly, all that did was activate a couple of relays, either dip beam or main beam, to put the power to the front of the car. And then in the late 80s, for some reason, they switched everything from positive switching to negative switching, which was a bit of a puzzle I had when I was ringing out my standard switch with the multimeter, the only continuity I was getting between one side and the other was through pin 31, which is actually an earth on the wiring diagrams. And I could not work that out why it was only going straight to earth. It didn't make any sense. But now I know this new information that it's earth switch relays that makes so much more sense. So let's have a little closer look at these. So here's the Haynes manual I was using last week what I was using the diagrams, what I was pinning out all the switches from, and what I discovered wasn't quite right. And that's because this is an 82 to the 83. So this is way too early for my switch gear. And the other one I've got is the auto data manual. Again, this is 82 to 86. So although this should have some relay wiring diagrams, they're gonna be positively switched, which is no good for me. So over the last few nights, I've just been on the internet, going through wiring diagrams. It's amazing what you can pick up from old Ford manuals, finding all sorts of things. And this is great bedtime reading for me. This is what I love doing. All the wiring diagrams, it's so therapeutic. Um, and it's good to have knowledge in all other areas. So like, even if you're looking at a relay here and you wonder why is this, why I going this way? If you can see the whole picture, it just makes it so more sense. And then you can see, oh yeah, that's why that's done. So. I carried on with that and then I did manage to find another one with relays in. Ford did this weird thing with a dim dip relay where they switched the power to the light switch and all sorts of things. But these are how the Ford diagrams are set out. I'm usually used to the VW and Audi diagrams that make a lot more easier to read because you've just got power and ignition at the top and then it comes down. These are for a little project I've got on for a local celebrity. He's got an Audi A4 and he's going from a TDI to 20 valve turbo, so it needs a bit of loom conversion. Uh, but yeah, this is what I'm used to, everything going down. So with the Ford bits going up and down and around and all like kind of a big treasure map, it's all a bit different. But then finally, I did find what I was looking for. I found a wiring diagram. This one is listed 87 to 89, but this is what I need. This is the light switch here and the signal for the switching is on pin 31, which mine has got, which goes across to this symbol here on a wiring diagram means an earth. So these are earth switched with the relays. These are dip and main relay. This is your dip and main switch here. So they go through, the power comes in through the battery down this red wire, not to the switch itself, but the power comes to the relay. Then the switch activates these small wires in the middle letting it through and off to the headlights. So this is the diagram I need. Finally, I found one with an earth switched light switch and also earth switches on the dip main as well. And the strange thing is they still use 15 terminal on the dip switch, the same as the earlier models, but now this one goes to earth as well. So 15 is normally an ignition live, which is how everything's got so confusing they carried on using the old switches, but went from positive to negative. So a 15, which is usually an ignition live, now comes across to an earth. So it makes a lot more sense. Now we've seen this, it makes more sense why we've got an earth and an ignition live joining together, which without these wouldn't make any sense. So like I say, knowledge is power. So let's transfer this to the car. So what does this actually mean for us? On the Tiger Loom itself, there's no relays in the circuit at all. The only ones we've got is the flasher unit and the power relay to make sure the hazards have power all the time. But in the Loom itself, there's no headlight relays. It's much like the early Sierra and a lot of classic cars where the power just comes through the switch, turns on via the switch and goes down to the car to the front on the headlights, which in theory is fine. But what I've found in my experience is as cars get older, the switches tend to break down and they act as a bit of a restriction. So not all the voltage can get through. So by the time you get to the front, you've got quite dim headlights with the older switches. So I was considering putting a relay in, which I've done on many cars in the past. I've done a BMW 2002, a Ford Mustang, all the older type vehicles with no relays. 
So you put a fresh feed into the relay and that's where the headlights get its power from and just the small voltage is needed from the switch to turn the relay on. So you get a much better power output. So I was considering doing that and I've got these nice little relay holders that are gonna clip in with all the rest of them. So we can put a relay, I'll get another one for the dip beam, main beam, and I am gonna have to put one in for the horn as well because on the Sierra itself, there's quite a robust horn switch. It's a, a big contact, but on the little horn switch, the current rating is quite low. So I'm gonna need a relay for that as well. So I've got these ones that slotted nicely. It's gonna make it look like a nice factory fuse box. So let's get on with that. So just before we dive back into the spaghetti, I thought I'd give you a little break from the wiring and talk about another job that we touched on in an episode many, many months ago. And that's how the Sierra steering column mounts to the GBS frame. You've got these bolts that go through, but as you can see, there's a huge hole in the Sierra column. And what that's for is for on the Sierra, you can adjust up, down, left and right to get it sitting perfectly in the dashboard. And the Haynes manual actually gives you dimensions on how that is. But for me, I'm not really happy about that because the column could move around. The accepted practice is just to put a big washer on and clamp it all down. But I don't really like the idea of that. It can still move. And also what we spoke about in the last episode is I need to move the column back slightly because the switches actually touch the scuttle. And I'd rather not cut the scuttle because I may be changing the column in the future after the IVA and everything's out the way. Um, but don't tell anyone. So I can do both these on the lathe, which is my second favorite thing from wiring is machine work. So I thought I'd give you a little bit of a treat, get you back on the lathe and make up some top hats. So with the help of the bandsaw and the lathe, I knocked up these nice little top hat spacers from this bit of aluminium. So what this means now is the hole down the middle locates these nicely on the bolt. And then these locate nice and snug in there. So now we're all located and centralized. So the bolt goes straight through the middle, no wobbling around. So let's get this back on the car. And all bolted up. So like I say, there's only a little five millimeter spacer, but now we're all located. We've still got our up and down adjustment on the GBS slots, but that much better. I'll get some slightly smaller washers for this side. But I think that looks very nice. So time to crack on with the wiring. So I've got these little relay holders. They're all modular and they're the same make as all the lower ones. So they all just clip together so that I make it all really nice and neat. And with the relays, the usual practice is just to put loads of spades on the back, which does work. But every time you want to change a relay or change something, once you take all these off, you're left with all these spade connectors and you've got no idea where they go to. So at least with the modular block, if you need to change a relay, it's just like a factory loom, you just take out the relay and put a new one in. The loom stays where it is, everything stays in its right terminals, so it makes it so much nicer. So like I said, these are just remote switches. So all the wires that used to go to the Sierra switches are now gonna go in the back of the relay blocks. So I should have everything here I need. I've got the Tiger Loom wiring diagram. Knowledge is power. So I can just work out where these go, connect them into the back of here. Then all we're gonna need from the switches to the relays is just some really thin, because these take barely any amps at all to switch them on and off to um, change the controls. So let's get wiring.
a little mid-session update for you. So I was going through the wiring diagrams for the Tiger Loom and for the Sierra switches and working out what needs to go together. And also in the Sierra switches, I worked out what I didn't need because some had been chopped off and some just weren't needed. So I took all the terminals out that were just blanked off because I'm not using the wipers or the horn. So I've got quite a few spaces. That's made that a little bit neater. And the wires that used to go to the switches that are now going to the relay blocks, I've routed them round from the fuse board into the back of the relay. So they'll be all nicely cut to length and that'll look very smart in there. You've got dip beam at the bottom, main beam, and then that's the horn wire at the top. And we've got the battery live going in there too. So that's working out really well. So now I just need the small tracer wires that will activate the relays from the Sierra switches. So I've still got the aerial atom loom that just came with all the clocks, all the bits I didn't need. So that'll be a good source for colored wire. There's some nice thin ones in there and it'll just make it easier in the long term if I can use different color wires for different jobs. It'll make any fault finding easier in the future rather than just using a red wire for everything. So let's carry on. And that's all the stalks all wired in. I've got all the Sierra column now wired into the Tiger Loom, all joining seamlessly. I used all the crimps like last week. So we've got the dip beam, main beam, and indicator stalk that side. We've got the light switch this side, and we're also connected into the ignition switch. I just need to get the other side of this plug because I've only got the male side, but the terminals are on there already. And these all run around to the relay block. I've got all the wires coming out of the relays that I need, so I need to shorten them down and put the terminals on them, but they're all ready to go in the back. So all the Sierra switches now are actually gonna be doing is activating the relays. So when you go to dip or main, the power will then go through to the relay block and the relay will supply power to the headlights. So let's get these relays connected in. We've also got the CarTech fog light module to wire in and it runs off the dip beam and the main beam. So instead of putting another join elsewhere, I thought we might as well connect that into the back of the relay block with the same wires. So it'll just be one connection for all of it. So let's get wiring. And that's the relays all clipped in and wired up. So all the wires go into the back and then you can just push the relays in the slots at the front. So if you ever need to change anything, you don't have to worry about rewiring it. It's just clip in, clip out like a normal factory car. So now I think we are all wired up. We've got the Sierra dip beam, main beam, indicators and light switch all wired up. We've got the aerial atom clocks we did last week all wired up. We've got the ignition switch, on there, all the relays are wired. So we've just got the Savage switches to connect for the fog light, the hazard switch, and the horn there. And they'll activate the relays to make everything work. But we're almost at the point of we can start to add electricity. I'm not gonna do the final wrap yet. I've done all the braiding on the end pieces that you're gonna see. And then this main loom, I'll be loom taping up. But I think I'll just, Give everything a test run first before I do the final wrap, but I think it's all gonna work really, really well. So very pleased with that, neat and tidy, and you wouldn't know it's a concoction of a Sierra loom, an aerial loom, and a tiger loom. So it's all come out really well. Something else I always do as I'm going along building a loom is just note down what wire colors you've used, where the wires go to, how the relays are wired up, and the wire colors that go into the relays, because once it's all wrapped up, 
you'll completely forget about it. And then if you want to add any accessories or anything in the future, you'll have to unwrap it and work out what is what. But like this, once it's finished, I'll make a full wiring diagram of the whole car. So it'll be just like a factory manual, even though it's a bit of a bits and pieces here and there, everything will make sense on the wiring diagram. So I've made special care of all the crimps and all the connectors, giving everyone a full on tug because you want to find out if it's a bit loose now, whether it's going to fall off, but everything has passed. And if anything was a bit loose, I did it again because I don't want any trouble in the future once it's all wrapped up. So I was just about to pack up and go home, but I thought everything's ready. Why don't we put a 12 volt feed on and see what happens? So we've got ignition key. I've just linked up 12 volts up to the main power in. So we've got ignition on, successful. Uh, side lights, works there. Should have indicators, left and right. They're not gonna flash because there's no load on the circuit. Uh, should have main beam flash, yes. And the warning lights, we've got the low warning level up here. Success, uh, this should be battery light. That's gonna go to the alternator. Yep, and the oil pressure's here as well. Perfect, and the starter motor isn't connected up, so I've just put it to a light for now, and this should be start. Perfect, full house. So I'm gonna connect some lights up and see if it works in real life. So I've just plugged the lights in. We've got rear lights, headlights, and front indicators. So let's turn this on. Should have side lights. Indicator. And the warning on the dash as well, flashing away. And so side lights, main lights, and main beam and dip beam. And with the lights off, we should still have flash as well. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. So I think we can declare that as an absolute success. I'm really pleased how the Sierra switches merged into the Tiger Loom and that's all gone together really nicely with the relays in. So I know we've got full power going to the headlights so they're always gonna be nice and bright no matter the age of what switches are turning them on. The last bit of wiring we've got left is just to wire in the Savage switches that are gonna go in the middle for the fog light, the hazard switch, and the horn as well. I've tested the horn on the relay, and although we've not got a horn in, it does click the relay, so that's all wired in well as also. On the Savage switches, they normally just have a load of spade connectors going into the back of them, and that's just how you normally wire them up. But like I said about the relays, that's all very well until you have to take them off and you're just left with a handful of spades. So I've got a little, plan for the next episode of how I'm going to plug them up. So if we ever do take the dash out, it's just going to be a plug and play and we're not going to have any trouble with that. It's been a bit of a long episode again with quite a monologue of the Sierra wiring at the beginning, but hopefully I rewarded you with a bit of lathe work. So that's kept you hanging around. So thanks so much for tuning in. And in the next episode, we'll just finish off this little bit of wiring, tape up the loom, and then we're all going to be finished and moving on to something else. So make sure you subscribe to get the next episode pop up on your screen. Give this video a like, but until next time, make sure you have fun.